Catholic in a past life, but I grew up as a Baptist. And the Baptists don't have any kind of iconery at all. We don't even wear crosses. And so I never had any of this stuff when I was little. And you're already doing it. <laughs> it's much easier that way. Yeah. <laughs> so I've collected it. When I went to antique shows and stuff, I always bought crosses. And I always bu and I bought Mexican art, like retablos, you know, with the uh -huh. Mexican painting on tin. And all kind of Mexican santos and stuff. And my house looks like a shrine. <laughs> because, and every time somebody walks in, they say, oh, you must be a Catholic. <laughs> my maids that are Mexican love it. <laughs> Um, so that's why I decided to do this. I was an interior designer for like, had my company uh -huh. for 18 years. And all of this in Dallas? In Dallas. Uh -huh. And I enjoyed that and that's what my degree is in, but you have to be a marriage counselor when you're an interior Ooh. designer. But that's true. Time. So I thought this would be more fun and easier and it is more fun but not easier. <laughs> <laughs> So, and you were tutored for him at the University of Texas? That's right. I woke up one morning and Don Meredith was asleep on my couch. <laughs> <laughs> that was the beginning of a long series. Yeah. And Chigger. Yeah. And Chigger, of course, is one of our favorite customers as well as friends. Oh, and her mother came in and shopped at Christmas. It was so fun. Oh, I haven't seen it in years. She bought it. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, now, would you tell us a little bit about what your jewelry is made of, the contents, like the, the stone beads part and then the metal and silver part? Okay. The metal, uh, if it's gold, it's bronze. And bronze is, this is red bronze. And it's the same bronze they make the great big statues out of that you see outside. And if it's silver, it's sterling. And I started out using a lot more sterling, but in the years and like today, you know, sterling has gotten so much more expensive that we do more of the bronze now. Uh, the stones that I use, I use, I use a lot of turquoise, but the same thing has happened with turquoise. I used to be able to get really beautiful turquoise, and now everything is dyed, and so I. I cut down on that a little bit, but I use other stones that are turquoise, like some of that blue agate back there. Oh, yeah, here it is. And, yeah. Uh, and then I have, this is a... Uh, so this is blue agate? Mm -hmm. And this is a jasper. It's called aqua jasper, aqua terrain jasper. And it, it's a, it's, it's actually a real stone. Some of the turquoise you see today is magnesite, which they call white turquoise that's been dyed a turquoise color. And it's beautiful, but it's not really turquoise. And so is it a problem to say to a customer, gold, when it's really bronze? I mean, or do you think that's something we need to... I mean, obviously for the price, they're going to know it's not 14 yeah, karat gold. Right. Yeah. But you call it gold because it's gold colored, right? right. And it's and red it, bronze. And so is the chain red bronze? This chain is brass because okay. this is an antique chain. And I use a lot of vintage chain because it matches my metals better than anything uh -huh. else. The gold fill chain that I used in, in the gemstone part of the line is too yellow because the red bronze is, because of its name, a little bit reddish. So I, I use a lot of vintage chain and I have a lot of chain that came out of a factory that used to make it for the Chanel handbags. In fact, from a man in Fort Worth. Sandy Shore, you know him? Uh, uh, well, I heard of him, yeah. Um, he bought this, uh, the, fa the leftovers from this factory that used to make it for Chanel handbags. I think Kareem shops buys things from him. Probably, everybody knows yeah. him. Yeah. So that's what I use for chain, and then I use a lot of these little seed beads for the simple ones because they're inexpensive and you can get a lot of bang for the buck because these are good to layer and you want more than one. And then about your metals and crosses, are they all things that you like collected and then you had them cast that's reproductions? Right. That's right. 
I've collected them for years, and I used to make necklaces out of the actual pieces. But then it occurred to me that I was going to have to spend most of my time collecting and not enough time making jewelry. So I made molds of the, my favorite ones. And I still find them. Um, I'm sure you're always looking. I'm always looking, yeah. I have, so far I have like 155 of the ones that, I've, that are my favorites. <laughs> And where do you find them mostly? Any At particular flea place? markets and antique shows. And when I travel, I, if I'm in a little town, I'll go into a, an antique mall or something, and I find them that way. And sometimes I use a lot some older. You know, when I first started, I made a whole bunch of great big sterling crosses. Remember those? Mm -hmm. I sure do. And sometimes I try to incorporate those back into the ones that I actually design myself. Do I? Are you sure it's not too So, then there's the gemstones are mostly semi precious, like um, this stone is Appetite, which I believe a Chinaman named and didn't know what it meant. <laughs> but it, it's a beautiful color. It is. And I use a lot of garnets and iolite and. And some precious stones like rubies, and, and then I use carnelian and lots of freshwater pearls. And I'm kind of known right now for this necklace that's made like this, which we call the no brain layered necklace, because I've taken the guesswork out of layering it for you, and it's all put together. Yeah, that's a great idea yeah. for someone like me. And believe me, I, it took me all day to figure out how to do this to make it look like I didn't try too hard. Because uh -huh. that's the hardest thing. I'm so. always trying to straighten it up, and it's supposed yeah, to not. It's supposed yeah. to not do that yeah. because then it doesn't. Then it looks like somebody did it for you. So. Right. That's that's the thing I sell the best. Okay. Are y'all doing okay? And the saints. You've written you've okay. written down definitions of all the saints. I have a book. Finally, uh, my son wrote it. That, and it's, uh, my son is studying to be a comedian, so there's a little humor involved. Uh, is there anything it else we can shows all the medals, it tells what the, who the saint is, and there's little stories about each, not each saint, but the ones that have a funny, have a good story. So it it's, makes it easier to sell if, you're, you know, if, if your employees are kind of Read, and it's kind of nice reading too. He tried to make it where it wasn't so dry. So just reading this would be helpful for him. Yeah. And did well, you tell me there's a saint about for insane people? Yes, and I bought one for you. <laughs> <laughs> and what is that person's name? It's just Pimpa is her name. And we we think it's from that's where they got the word dysfunctional. <laughs> I bet so. And she well, went crazy because, uh, if I remember the story correctly, the story's in here, but uh, her father wanted to marry her, and she didn't want to marry her father. And so she kept running away, and he kept finding her, and he finally had, he finally made her marry him, and then she went crazy. <laughs> I guess so. Well, I guess so. Well, girls, can okay. you think of any other questions for Andrea? Not today. Well, we Thank have, you. Uh, we're looking forward to getting all these new things in April.